All right, everybody. So now we are going to talk about homeostatic agents. Now, when we talk about homeostatic agents, it means that these are the agents. Wait, I've got a message. Do you have it? Uh, why can't they enter? I don't understand because from my end, I don't have any restriction placed. I don't understand why they are not able to enter. Tell them to try to, you know, uh, re-enter. Okay? Tell them that. Yeah. Okay. Let's start. Hmm. All right. So we were talking about the homeostatic agents, right? So when we talk about homeostatic agents, it means that these are the agents which are going to balance our, uh, our normal internal conditions, right? Wait a minute. So, uh, these are all which we are going to talk about today. So, starting up with vitamin K1, which is also called as uh, phytonadione, right? All right. So, vitamin K1 is found in food stuff and is available for oral and parenteral use. So, adequate bile salts are required for oral absorption. Vitamin K1 is required for post-translational modification of clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Administration of vitamin K to newborns reduces the incidence of uh, hypothrombinemia of the newborn, which is especially common in premature infants. Can any one of you tell me what do I mean by hypothrombinemia? Reduces the incidences of hypothrombinemia. Oh, what is that? G. Okay. Leave the message in the chat box, okay? Because the name itself indicates hypo, thrombin, and then in the blood, right? Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> for, I um, was uh, sorry, uh, IV administration is typically for patients with D3 deficiency and for replenishment of normal levels reduced by antimicrobial therapy or surgery. So, here that means we note, we have to note it down. That vitamin K levels can be affected by antibiotics, right? Or antimicrobial therapy or the surgery. So IV uh, vitamin K1 is effective in reversing bleeding episodes induced by oral hypoglycemic agents. Now, the next thing that can uh, replenish our body is plasma fractions. Here, we are talking in context to anemia, right? That how exactly our body can help us to maintain the normal levels, okay? So, you see, plasma fractions must be administered IV. What do you mean by plasma fraction? Plasma fraction are those, fra uh, like you take the blood of somebody, okay? And then you take plasma out of that blood and then you inject it into the other person's body, right? So, that is plasma fraction, right? So, plasma fractions must be administered IV. Plasma fractions are pre frequently prepared from blood or plasma pooled from multiple individuals. Though it's a good thing, but see, there is a negative impact of that, that you see, it can uh, bring antigens into other person's body, right? So, thus, they are associated with an increased risk of exposure to hepatitis and HIV. Recombinant DNA techniques that permit in vitro synthesis of these products eliminate this danger. 
I'm sure you all remember now what is recombinant DNA technique. All right. Then plasma protein preparations include all of these. You have to memorize their name. So the therapeutic use is the that they include the treatment of various congenital defects of homeostasis. That means inborn defects such as hemophilia A. Uh, which is due to deficiency of factor 8, hemophilia B, which is due to deficiency of factor 9, then hereditary anti-thrombin 3 deficiency. So the other agents that increase clotting capacity are these. So we have desmopressin acetate, right? So it increases got the, uh, the factor 8 synthesis and can be used before minor surgery in patients with mild hemophilia, right? So in order to promote the coagulation, okay? Then we have denazole. It is an impeded androgen that increases factor 8 synthesis. It is infrequently used in some anemia and refractory idiopathic thrombocytopenic Purpura. Uh, I hope you all remember that for purpura, uh, it refers to the purplish uh, impression, uh, purplish circles um, on the skin, right, due to accumulation of blood in the skin. And then, uh, right, so refractory means that it is not responding, right? Okay. Then we have inhibitors of fibrinolysis. So, why exactly we are lysing the fibrin right so maybe we want to uh, we want to get rid of the clot right okay so first of all we have amino caproic acid and then we have tranexamic acid so in amino caproic acid is a synthetic, a synthetic agent similar in structure to lysine it competitively inhibits plasma uh, plasminogen activation, right? So, what is plasminogen? If you remember from physiology, that these uh, uh, plasminogen are converted into the plasmin, and then uh, you know the entire uh, process goes on. Okay. So, this agent is used as an adjunct in the treatment of hemophilia for post-surgical bleeding and in patients with hyperfibrinolysis. Then we have tranexima, uh, sorry, tranexamic uh, acid. So it is more potent analog of uh, amino caproic acid. Thank you, everybody.